All right, well, welcome back to our next video. We're gonna do a quick recording about how to handle writing to a file. Uh, we'll be covering the print stream class in this particular video, and we'll be comparing it to the scanner class. If scanner's been our tool so far for getting input, print stream is gonna be a primary tool for producing output. And what's interesting is we've actually seen the print stream class before, uh, and we're gonna talk about that. And so to get started, I'm back in Eclipse. I have my project folder and my class. I've called this print stream demo. It's right here. I've got my console ready to go. I'm ready to write some code. Let's throw a main method in this class. All right, and let's talk about, oops, that's not how you spell args at all. Let's talk about what we've done so far. In order for this video to have meaning, you should have seen the scanner class. And when we talk about the scanner class, we say that uh, there are three things that we scan. We can scan the user from system.in, we can scan uh, strings, and we can scan files. And we've most recently been talking about applying scanners to files and what's useful about that. Um, it's introduced a few new concepts like if we're going to try and access a file object, we need to acknowledge the possibility that if we wrote our code wrong, we might go looking for a file in the wrong place. We might go looking for a file that doesn't exist. So we recently talked about the file not found exception. So let's, let's look at this code that we've just most recently been working on. If I make a new file object, and I'm gonna call this new file object, um, let's see, a new file, and let's pick a, a file that I've been working on already. Uh, we can call it weather.txt, weather.txt. If I wanted to get information from this file, I would make a scanner object, um, I like to name my Scanners that are reading files, I call them file reader. Um, if you're scanning the console to get input from the user, I usually call those user input. If you're scanning a string, I call it string parser, or line parser, or something like that. So we say scan a file reader equals new scanner, and I aim it right here. And Eclipse being the handy tool that it is, is saying, hey, there are some classes that I don't recognize, but we do have access to those in other libraries. Did you want the file class from the input output library, and I will gladly accept their help on that. Do you want the scanner class from the utilities library? I will gladly accept that. And then here's this new thing that we've been realizing. Um, if we have a method whose job it is to work with reading from a file, and we're gonna find out writing to a file, we need to throw the file not found exception, which is also something that needs to be imported. And this is our way of acknowledging that we are working with something that can crash our program at runtime. Okay, so up until this point, we've been taking information from, well, what if I wanted to write information to a file? So instead of um, instead of reading from, I wanna to write to. This is the problem we're trying to solve. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment out these two things to start with, and we're gonna do something else. Um, I'm gonna say file f equals new file, and I'm gonna say um, test data txt and if you look in the text files associated with my project folder I have something called test file.txt but I don't have test data so I'm I'm actually referring to a file that does not exist more about this in a second then I'm gonna say print stream um, I think it's probably makes sense to call this like file writer something like that make sure that you're communicating that you're writing to a file print stream file writer equals new print stream and I'm gonna aim this print stream at that file right there. So we've got this new tool, we've never seen it before, print stream, capital P, capital S, what's it doing? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and import it, it also lives in the IO library. And it's the job of the print stream object to write statements to a file. And this brings me to my first important thing that you need to know. Uh, if the file does not exist, it is created. If the file does exist, the contents are overwritten. So we see this powerful feature here, and you wanna be real careful. If you've worked hard to have your program 
uh, recording information to a file and you happen to open a print stream aimed at an important file that's got information in it, you're going to be in a bad way. You're going to lose everything that's in there. So make sure this is kind of the dangerous line right here. Uh, once you've opened this up towards a file, make sure it's something that is ready to receive that, whether it's blank, whether it's brand new, is it been created yet? Um, so we've made the digital file object that connects me to the actual text file that's going to exist in a moment. I've made the print stream whose job it is to write to that file. How do I actually write to the file? So I'm going to say file writer dot and when all the options come up, whoa, we're just going to ignore that. When all the options come up, I'm going to see a really familiar selection of methods. I see print, I see print F, I see print line, and I know what you're thinking. Well, hang on a minute. We've seen all of these before. Print line, for example, I've said system dot out dot. And when I go to manage some of these methods, I see all the same methods. And the reason for that is, and this is going to be easy, more easily understood uh, later in our video series when we start talking about classes and objects. But when I access the out object, out is actually a print stream. It turns out that every time you've printed something to the console so far, you've been using a print stream. But the destination for that print stream is the console instead of a text file. So system.out is a print stream. So I can say print or print line or print F. I can do the exact same things with any print stream object that I create. So if I want to put something in this file, uh, like um, hello there. Uh, not to use that one again, but it's just a good one. When I go to execute this code, what's the, is it not closed? Is this where I'm at? Yeah. I go and I run the code. Something disconcerting happens. I look at the console and nothing appeared. We're thinking to ourselves, yeah, but I told it to print line hello there. Usually that means that something appears here. Well, actually what's happened is we've made a new file and our text appeared there. So then you go to your project folder, you, you get past all your Java files, and you look, and you say, all right, well, we said we were going to create testdata.txt, and I just don't see it. What happened? Well, what you want to do is if you go and refresh your project folder, there we go, refresh, it'll add any new files that might now exist. And da-da-da-da, there is testdata.txt. And lo and behold, it's got hello there in there. So what happened? Well, what this means is, whoops, let's not do that. We've now written to a file. And I could write a whole bunch of things to a file if I wanted. I could say, hey, file writer dot uh, print, th whoops, this or that. And then, you know, maybe I would say um, file writer dot print f um, percent F percent D, give me a float and a, a regular integer digit. My float will be 3.14, whoops, or maybe. My digit will be negative 17, whoa. And when I execute this again, realize it's gonna execute all these statements again. It's gonna make the digital file object, open the print stream. Presently, there's hello there in there. That's gonna get erased and then it's going to add in hello there, this or that, and my other statements. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, do I need to refresh this? Oh, nope, there it goes. It, it reappeared for me. And we can see the print stream methods work exactly the same way they've worked for system.out. Print line got its own line. Print stayed on the same line, kept the cursor there, as did print F. And so we see this or that. Uh, plus the 3.14, blah, 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 and the negative 17. Okay. Um, you want to be careful that when you open a print stream that you are writing to something that you want overwritten. Because if this was information I wanted preserved and I decided to change my program and now I was going to say uh, something like, whoa, when I go to run this program, all of my data that's here is going to get overwritten as soon as it updates. Yep, there it goes. Whoa, so I've lost everything. Print streams, really valuable. The last thing I wanna say in the video is this. 
Normally I have a student who will point out, well, Mr. Mulvaney, you have now given us code that creates unique digital files. You've also taught us how to loop. What is to stop at me from making a massive while loop or a for loop, let's say, that runs um, 10 million times and it creates a unique string that every time it runs, maybe it concatenates together, you know, uh, the, the index of the for loop and some other uh, string literal. We use that and we just loop and create 10 million files. And I'm here to tell you, you don't want to do that. Um, you, you are inviting danger when you combine loops and print streams to create new files. It's almost never something I think you would want to do. I think it's purely an academic exercise. And so my word of caution is avoid doing that. You don't want to run out of space or um, cause any other kinds of problems that would, you know, crash your computer. Um, especially don't do these things at school. All right, that's all I've got for a video today. Thank you.